Oh. There's no introduction. Because there's no story yet. Wait, did the music change? It sounds more heavy for some reason. Okay, this is <clears throat> this is I think the first that the case is split into two ca like two chapters. That's a very interesting decision. So the times finally come. Today we unravel everything. That's very optimistic. I'll be counting on your support more than ever today, Mr. Sato. Mr. Sato? Ah! Ah! Ouch! Oh no! Uh, what's the matter, Mr. Naruto? Uh, nothing. I was just saying that I'll be relying on you today, but... I'm so sorry, of course. I know I can rather be incompetent at times, but... I shan't let you down. Would you mind helping me to my feet then? Oh dear, I'm I'm really very sorry. So Sato-san isn't her usual self at all, but that's hardly surprising, I suppose. She's just found out that her father is the partner of a Ford famous detective, not to mention. Ah, uh, good morning, sir. But that should be... she should be elated, right, to find out her father is the partner of Sholmes? But that part about Iris's father... It's just... Lord Van Zieks. Thank you for all your efforts yesterday. What? Did I hear that correctly? What? Oh, uh, no, nothing. Just, uh, I hope we can clear things up today. I really can't make this man out. His face says I hate you, but his words are almost jovial today. Jovial? <laughs> In fact, he hasn't been very Reaper-like at all since this all began yesterday. Lord Van Zieks isn't a Reaper, Mr. Naruhudo. Did you read my mind? You still can do that? Good point. The Reaper, I suppose in hindsight, I should never allow that misconception to go unchallenged. Huh? It was my tacit acceptance of that pseudonym. My failure to stop the Reaper becoming something more than mer legend that led to all this. But you're not to blame for that, Lord Van Zieks. It's only because serious crime in the capital dropped off so sharply when the public started calling you that. That's why you didn't say anything, isn't it? To be frank, I'm not sure that was the sole reason. What do you mean? There was a rumor at the time that the Reaper was really the ghost of my late brother. Oh. That having been slain by that evil killer, Clint's restless spirit returned as some sort of demigod to wield a deadly blade of justice where I, but died of the law, could not. Yes, we've heard that story too. When I lost him, I felt as though I'd lost my guiding light. I didn't know where to go or what to do. And so, in some small way, I wonder if perhaps those rumors made me feel his absence a little less keenly. Oh, Van Zieks. Even if I knew it was just an illusion, just some nonsense conjured up by an over-imaginative public. He was obviously extremely important to you, Lord Clint Van Zieks. Well, what's important now is uncovering the truth. Oh, what's important now is uncovering the truth. That's all that matters. I know that you didn't take anyone's life. Huh? And I intend to prove that beyond a shadow of a doubt in court today. I never thought I'd say this, but I can see it in your eyes. 
that burning desire to cut through all the lies and deception. I can't deny it any longer. You are a lawyer of absolute integrity. Wow, very high praise. Thank you. Now tell me, why do I detect the scent of expensive tea leaves in the air? Huh? Oh! Iris, when did you get here? Oh. Uh, and, um, I brought you one of my special plants. Why was she looking so serious just now? Hurley loves it. He says it helps him to clear his head. I thank you. Uh, well, that was for Vadzix, okay? Oh, hee <laughs> hee. What? That's surely the first and last time I'll ever see a sight like this. I thought the tea was for me, for my work. Uh, wh wh why are I giving it to Van Zeex? Mm, you seem different today, I Oh, you seem different today, Iris. Oh? Sort of subdued, I suppose. I am not. What happened yesterday is obviously still playing on her mind a lot. She's clearly very troubled about having stolen that autopsy report from Dr. Scythe's laboratory. Is she only troubled about that? Alright then, good luck to you both. I have to make a move now. Oh, you're not staying? I thought you'd want to watch today's proceedings. Well, I'd like to cheer you on, obviously. But I've got lots to re get ready. Get ready? For what? Oh yes. Would you take this? Oh. Uh, oh, that's cute. Isn't that one of the little felt dolls that's usually dangling, dangling from your knapsack? Oh, is it? Yes, it's a lucky charm. A little Hurley that I made once. A rabbit Hurley. A Hurley? It looks more like a Hurley to me. <laughs> If for some reason you completely run out of options in the trial today, then just pull this little Hurley's ears as hard as you possibly can. Okay, and then what? Then Sholmes will appear or something? Pull his ears? That's right, it's a way to bring good luck. I think you might need it. Okay. This is now evidence. You, you think uh, what we'll need is luck? Hey, you can't have enough luck, okay? This is so cute. So cute. Um... Pull his ears. Oh, what a charming little rabbity version of Mr. Sholmes. Do you suppose this is how Iris sees him? Are you alright, Mr. Naruto? Your eyes are veritably boring into the poor doll's ears. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was just wondering. What do you suppose would happen if I were to tuck its ears with all my might right now? I'm sure that we'll find out when the time is right. To become a proper gentleman, you mu really must learn stoic patience. I do hope I don't damage it. But I want to know. Pull it with all my might? What... What do you want to do? Like, pull it out? And why is this evidence? I just need this peek inside the court room. And it seemed very different to normal. Yes, it would seem. That a certain someone has decided to pull out all the stops. What does that mean? What about Mr. Sholmes, Iris? I don't know. He was out all night and he hadn't come home by the time I left this morning. Oh, I see. Was Professor Mikotoba out all night too, do you think, Mr. Sato? Yes, it would seem so. I telegrammed to the hotel this morning. 
and apparently they didn't come back to their rooms last night at all. Oh, I do hope they are all right. They? Father and Judge Jigoku, I mean. Judge Jigoku is also missing? He too? That's right, nobody appears to have seen either of them since yesterday. Go over the defendant, the defendant. Court is about to begin. Please make your way inside. At once. Good luck then, for now. Good luck, Susie. Yes, thanks, Iris. And you, Mr. Reaper, I hope it goes well. Once again, I thank you for the delicious tea. It was very soothing. Oh, I'm so glad. Huh? What was that? Well, we must go inside now, Lord Van Zix. Hmm. Lord Van Zix has always been the formidable prosecutor I've had to lock horns with in court. But not today. Today, I battle with another in pursuit of the truth. My best friend, Kazuma Azugi, who I trust more than anyone else in the world. Now I understand what it was that drew me here to Britain all those months ago. Now I know exactly what destiny I had in store for me. It's all been leading up to this one day, to this one trial, to this one final reckoning. No, Judge. It feels even more oppressive here than it did yesterday. There are cold stairs piercing me like knives from all sides today. Ah! Oh, Mr. Naruhodo, look! Ah! Oh, Lord Strongheart? What? Oh! What? <laughs> That's not an impartial judge! Kazuma must have known beforehand. The ramifications of this trial now extend far beyond the murder of one Scotland Yard inspector. In fact, events have come to light that threatens to rock the very foundations of our country's legal system. The escape of the condemned criminal on the night of his execution, the subsequent unlawful shooting of the man, and the revelation that prison staff must have been complicit in the jailbreak. Britain is hardly hosting influential members of the judiciary from countries all around the world. It is imperative that we uncover the truth in these proceedings to avoid international embarrassment. By royal decree, this will continue to be a closed trial. And one over which I, male Strongheart, exercise total and inequivocal authority. Holy crap, even more imposing when he looks down on me like that. The, the six jurors flames just... As was the case in yesterday's proceedings, those here present in a public gallery are distinguished members of our judiciary assembled to bear witness to a fair judicial process. In other words, a collection of your acolytes, Lord Strongheart. On a personal note, I find this most distressing, Lord Van Zix. You were a prosecutor of exceptional talent. Much like your brother Clint, in fact. Ooh! In the name of the Her Majesty the Queen, I hereby declare this court to be in session. For the trial of Barak van Zix, who officially stands accused of murder. Counsels for the prosecution and defense, you are, are you in full readiness to proceed? The defense is ready, my lord. As is the prosecution. 
Yesterday's proceedings brought to light a shocking and disturbing fact. There was a sight to the victim, the inspector Tobias Gregson, that was unknown to his superiors at Scotland Yard. Yes, he was carrying out operations in secret, which Scotland Yard knew nothing about. And in those clandestine operations, he had an accomplice. Mr. Daly Vigil, who would be given the inspector's identification and present himself around the capital in order to establish credible alibis for Gregson. In that way, Gregson appeared to be carrying out his regular Scotland Yard work when he was, in fact, he wasn't. At the end of yesterday's session, Mr. Vigil, who had been suffering from amnesia, regained his memory. It would appear he buried his memories of the time deep inside himself as a means of self-preservation. Because whilst he was engaged as chief warder at Barclay Prison, he abetted a convict's escape. Mr. Vigil is currently recuperating at St. Sinus. He has recovered enough to give a signed statement about his movements on the day prior to the incident. He is formally admitted to posing as Gregson whilst investigating the Red-Headed League. Which brings us to the crucial issue of the victim's time of death. The defense yesterday proposed a suggestion that a victim may have been killed one day earlier. This was based largely on a discovery that a victim's pocket watch had not been wound. The prosecution has something to report on that subject, my lord. Really? Go ahead, Prosecutor Asuki. I met once again with the coroner yesterday to discuss the issue. She confirmed that the defense's suggestion could not be ruled out. Hmm. It's entirely possible that Inspector Gregson was killed on 31st of October, the day before his body was discovered. I have here an updated autopsy report that includes the amended details. But the official opinion of the investigation team was made clear yesterday that the time of death was 5 p.m. on 1st of November. There are indications of an attempted of an attempt to disguise the real time of death, however, it seems that a natural decaying process of the victim's body may have been slowed by keeping it chilled. Oh, I love you, Kazuma. You're not folding beneath Lord's strong heart. Time of death indeterminate. Right, that's what she announced yesterday. Dr. Gore, I mean. That's out of the question. What? There are no refrigeration devices in that part of London large enough to accommodate a human corpse. My lord, this is more than just conjecture. There's evidence to support the idea. We must investigate it thoroughly. Very well. The court will accept the new report as evidence. However, if this updated report is deemed to be accurate, it would give renewed significance to the movements of the victim on the day before the Fresno Street incident. Yeah, that's what we are hoping for. Yeah. It would, yes. Especially since on that day, Inspector Gregson was using Mr. Vigil to cover up his real movements. It's conceivable that he was killed in the course of his secret activities. Do I sense the prosecution has some information regarding those activities? Scotland Yard put an enormous effort into investigating that precise matter yesterday. Hmm. I think we should begin by presenting the results of that investigation work. So the prosecution calls its first witness now. Wait, is it Gina? Wow, she looks very serious. State your name and occupation for the court. Inspector Gina Lestrade reporting. Rep representative or Scotland Yard. A self-conferred rank, but never mind. <laughs> oh, Gina, again? What's your problem, Otto? 
What's with that? Gina, again, look a... <laughs> she can look, she can see right through me. Ah. The boss meant the word to me. He done more for me than anyone else ever did. Oh, Inspector Gregson, you mean? He got me out of the back slums of the East End and took me under his wing. Taught me that life can have a purpose. So that's why I'm the best person to be standing here speaking for him. Oh, Gina. Uh, right, all out of, out of the goodness of Gregson's heart. Not at all that he had his arm twisted by Mr. Sholmes, no. What's relevant to these proceedings is that the outcome of Scotland Yard's investigations yesterday has revealed that the victim was carrying out some assignment the police knew nothing about. Very troubling. That face. Lord Strongheart knew. So, Inspector Lestrade, let's hear exactly what it says in that report. Coming right up, sir. Oh yeah, detectives are supposed to follow orders and investigate what they're told. But a little search of the boss's office turned up a notebook in that had a lot of secret meetings in it. According to that, the boss was looking into some smuggled goods stealing that night that day. Looks like it was a big job and all, but the coppers weren't on it onto it yet. What matters most is there's witnesses who saw the Reaper at the place too. Smuggled goods? I don't know, do I? I'm just telling you what was written in the book. Tobacco, tea, spices, medicines, goods of all sorts flow into London by illegal channels from across the globe. It's well known that they are disposed of at regular black markets that take place in the capital, but the police are rarely able to locate them in time. And so Inspector Gregson was investigating one of those black markets? It's been suggested that high-ranking government officials may be involved in black market activity. No doubt Gregson was trying to avoid details of his investigations being leaked to the involved parties. That would explain why he was operating on his own authority without the Yard's knowledge. And do we know where the dealings were taking place this time? In a particular room of a certain exclusive London gentleman's club. And on the day in question, the accused is known to have been there. That's the conclusion of Scotland Yard's investigation. <coughs> that can't be. We haven't heard anything about any of this. Members of the club have testified to it. There's no question. The accused, Barok van Zieks, was present. Is it true, van Zieks? That would have been... that would be very significant testimony, then. Oh my, but... but... Lord von Zieks has made no mention of this at all. In short, Lord von Zieks has ample opportunity to murder the victim. Very well then. Counsel for the defense, begin your cross-examination. A notebook. Do we have the notebook in our possession in the evidence? No. Can we press? Hold it! So you went through Inspector Gregson's things. Yep, as part of the Independent Lestrade investigation. I'm sure your superiors would be delighted that you are taking the initiative. So I snuck into his office when no one else was about. Because if anyone in the yard had seen me going in there, they'd have turfed me straight out on the street. This is sounding less and less like an investigation and more and more like something else. The prosecution understands that it was this very detective who discovered the notebook. You got that right. Nothing gets past Inspector Lestrade and his trusty assistant, Chief Inspector Toby, who found it hidden in one of his desk drawers that had a false bottom. That's Impressive. So then, I went to hide myself when no one could find me, so could have a butcher's at what was written in it. 
so I could have a butchers at what was written in it. Because if anyone in the yard had found me out, they'd have turned me straight out on the street. Huh. I've given it in now, though, ain't I? And if it weren't for me, it wouldn't have never have been found. Into smuggled goods. Hold it! Do you have any idea where those dealings were taking place? Yep. It was all there in the boss's notes. Let's see if I can remember. Um. As I already said, the illegal dealings were due to take place at the gentleman's club. Yes, I remember, but I was hoping to find out the name. That would be necessary. What? It's conceivable that a club might be used again by the smugglers in future. Therefore, the prosecution had been, has been asked not to reveal the name in these proceedings. I don't know what all the fuss is about. It's right here. All I've got to do is read it out. And I could too. I've got this reading game buttoned up now. Can I show you what I can do? Can't. Come on. What's the harm? The judge hasn't signaled his objection yet. I could try to find out. What should I do? <laughs> Insist. This is a closed court. The proceedings are confidential. There shouldn't be any possibility of the information being leaked. As I explained, there's some possibility of politicians being involved in this affair. The prosecution is rightfully exercising caution, I imagine. No, my lord. The prosecution has no objection. Huh? Ho 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 ho! Going against Strongheart's wishes, Kazuma? There's no question that Inspector Gregson was looking into these black market dealings, however, it's not yet been established that he was on that particular trail on the day in question. If the defense requires to know the club's name, the prosecution has no intention of being obstructive. Oh. Strongheart must be furious, fuming. All right then, I get to show off my reading skills. Apparently, the smuggle good deal, good deal, was gonna happen at a gentleman's club called the Grouse. Looks like it was a big job, and all. The Grouse. Okay. Hold it. The Grouse? What sort of a club is that? I ain't got the foggiest. Clubs ain't exactly my thing. But I am kind of curious. They're not places where a foreign student like you would be readily admitted. <laughs> Have you looked in the mirror recently? <laughs> I tell you what. Me and Chief Inspector Toby could go in undercover. Could you though? I could pick out a good few marks and see what else I could find out while I was in there. I really don't think you should go picking out anything. Anyway, that's where these black market dealings were going to take place, is it? Yeah, it's gotta be. That's what a lower ranking detective at the yard reckon. Says the even lower ranking detective. The grouse. The coppers weren't on to it yet. Hold it! Lord Van Ziegs was at the club. He was. Detectives who visited the club yesterday to make inquiries have confirmed it. Several members report having seen the accused being admitted in the room in question as a guest. It looks like there's no disputing that he was there then. Well, we know that Lord Van Ziegs was investigating Inspector Gregson, don't we? Perhaps he'd already discovered the Inspector's secret notebook. Which led him to the club, you mean? Mm, maybe. Presumably then, there are also eyewitnesses who can testify that Gregson was there. None have been identified at this time, no. What? So the all-important victim wasn't seen at this mysterious club? Oi! 
Why ain't you asking Inspector Lestrade, eh? Oh, so we found a notebook saying he was there, but there were no witnesses. So that's all I've got to work with. Jenna's not holding back with that ice cold stare of hers, is she? I really don't know what to make all of this. Lord Van Zeeks, had, uh, Lord Van Zeeks told us that he was investigating Gregson, but he never once mentioned that he met the inspector the day before the incident. You don't think Lord Van Zeeks could have been lying to us, do you? That's not the only way to explain this. Oh. If everything Lord Van Zeeks has told us is true, then there must be a mistake in this testimony somewhere. You mean, you mean, there are details we've yet to uncover? Exactly. A clue, perhaps, that even Gina has noticed. That's what we should be looking for. 